Hey YouTubers, your buddy Platt. And today we're continuing on our beer style series. And we're going to talk about a beer today that I would call a big boy. Uh, if you've heard me in the past talk about a beer being big or big flavor, whatever. It's, it's a beer that is higher in alcohol, has more flavor, really, you know, delivers the taste in your mouth. And the American Barley Wine is a great example of that. Uh, we're going almost the top, total opposite end of the, the like American Diet Lager, American Lager that were real light, real effervescent, lower alcohol. This is going to be on the other end. And let's start off with the numbers to kind of tell the story. SRM, we're looking between 11 and 22. Now these aren't dark beers, but you're going to have some nice rich color to them. Uh, where you'll notice these beers really stick out is in the IBUs. We're looking from 60 to 100. There's a lot of hops in here. Uh, but you're going to notice there's a lot of malt to balance these beers out. And that malt helps produce a higher alcohol content. And our ABV is going to be between 8.4 and 12% ABV. Uh, almost to the point ABV wise of wine. So that's why the name barley wine is, is fairly appropriate with these beers. Also, because they're almost wine-like in ABV, temperature-wise, you're going to want to serve them between 50 and 55. Again, these are not beers you'll throw on ice, serve them ice cold. Um, again, because the higher alcohol content, similar to wine, we're going to serve it at a similar temperature. Um, the, these beers are anywhere from an amber to deep red. Like so they're not they're not black. It's not stout on that extreme on the SRM scale. But these are dark, deep colors that we get on these beers. Uh, Carbonation-wise, these are going to be low to medium carbonation, slow-rising bubbles. Uh, the, again, these are not effervescent lagers like we've been used to drinking. Um, also, you're going to get, you're going to notice the alcohol. If you probably remembered on the amber ales and amber lagers, I told you there's some alcohol. And you're going to first notice it, but you're not going to get a burn. It's not going to be a warming sensation. Well, this one, you're going to get an alcohol burn. You're going to get some alcohol sensation. There's definitely warming uh, to this. Um, when I took, you know, I told you the IBUs are from 60 to 100. That means I'm going to get a lot of hop aroma, a lot of it on the nose, but I'm also going to get a lot of bitterness to it. But again, we got plenty of malt to play around with it, so don't. Think of this as some of the really almost overly hoppy IPAs that are out there now. There, but there's lots of hops to this beer. You're going to get a lot of hop flavor, a lot of hop aroma. Um, also, too, because there's so much malt, there's so much to this beer, and it's an ale, you're going to get all those great, funky, fruity esters that are uh, in here. The These beers uh, sometimes mature while you get to pick up all those fruity esters in these in these beers. Um, as far as uh, mouthfeel, texture, whatever, these are thick beers, coatings. These are not the refreshing, thirst quenching diet lagers. These beers are going to coat your tongue. They're almost sticky in your mouth, but they're going to hit all points for your taste buds. Give you there's going to be a lot of flavor in here, and because of that, you're going to have a medium high to long finish well after you're done with this beer you're still gonna have the flavor in your mouth is you know you can linger you can get complexities you know 20 30 seconds up to a minute after you're done drinking this beer and because this beer is so big and has higher alcohol content it's a great to pair it with rich desserts and strong cheeses um, one of the things when you start trying to learn wine and and food pairings or beer and food pairings is you want something to match the intensity of the food. If you got a lighter food, you want a lighter beer or a softer beer. And if you got big food with big flavor, you're going to need a beer that can cut through that arbor. And the American barley wine does just that. Now, the particular barley wine we're going to try today is Killer Penguin out of uh, Boulder Beer from uh, Boulder, Colorado. So let's give her a try. You may have noticed already, I don't have my standard pint glass. Um, high alcohol, intense beers like that, sometimes a snifter is a good uh, receptacle for that. And because these beers are high in alcohol, you're not going to just throw in a pint glass and just knock her back like you would a Bud Light, Coors Light, what have you. 
So you tell in here we've got a red, ruby, brown, reddish, ruby, brown kind of color. A very light, thin, khaki colored head on top. Not a lot of bubbles, not a big head. Let's give her a sniff. Oh, yeah. Plenty of maltiness, kind of dark fruit. You still get some of the hop aroma, but there's a lot of malt here. And you'll definitely get that on the nose. So let's give her a try. Wow. Man, a lot of flavor. Sweetness punches the front of my tongue, but the rest of my tongue is coated. I get flavor all the way down. You, you, you almost taste in the back of your throat. Um, let me try another sip. Oh, yeah, you get a little bit of the alcohol burn on your back. You do notice it going down, down your throat. Um, now, this particular beer is 10.0 ABV. Like I said, some of them go up to 12 or so, so that burn and that alcohol is even bigger on some of these beers. Um, the American barley wine, compared to its counterpart, the British or the more traditional European barley wine, is going to have a more hop intensity. And I get a little more of the hop bitterness on the finish. Um, that's just kind of the American style, is to, is to add a little more uh, bitterness. Uh, a lot of the American hops tend to be higher alpha acids, which means you're going to get more of a bitterness than the British counterpart. But again, these, these beers have so much you know, to them, they're higher in alcohol, so much malt, that that bitterness is just fine. It's not, again, it's not over the top bitterness, but it's, you're definitely getting it. It's probably, it's easily the most bitter beer as far as I've used where we tried so far, but it works. It's not, it, you know, it's not a hot bomb in any way. Oh, but that's a nice, that's a definite sipper. This is not a chugger, and because of the alcohol warming, goes great in the kind of winter time, you know, late fall, winter time kind of uh, time frame to drink, but you can drink all year around as much as you like. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, always feel free to share comments in this comment section below, or if you want to contact me, you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.